In this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can use the Delaunay mesh to produce these forms. So basically, we are going to define how we can produce these forms with combining the Delaunay mesh with Weaverbird. This is one of the forms you can see here. Uh, we can also produce a form uh, like this, which is basically just using different commands of the Weaverbird uh, plugin. And then we are going to go on these two kind of forms. As you can see, this one is uh, a smooth mesh, which we can control and change by these points. So it's going to be easy to control that. Then we are going to make those creases, as you can see here, and uh, control the overall form. And we can also bake that so we will have something similar to this one. So this is going to be a tutorial of how you can use this to uh, use the Delaunay mesh to make this form. And at the end, I'm also going to show you how you can produce this form. And basically, this tutorial will show you how you can use the Delaunay mesh in Grasshopper. We get to start from scratch. Uh, what we want to do is to produce a Delaunay mesh and explain uh, how we can control it. So uh, if we go to the mesh section here and go into the triangulation part, you can see the Delaunay mesh here. You can always also search it by double clicking on the canvas and typing DEL. So let's just do that. We can also go for DEL and have this Delaunay mesh. Let me put the bifocals plugin in so you can see this. Okay, so the next part is the uh, explaining the inputs. The first input is the points. So I'm going to extract this and set multiple points uh, on the XY plane. So let's assume that we have these points and we have maybe two set of points or four set of points here. Okay, it will produce a mesh. If you don't see the edges, you can just hit the Control M command or simply go to the display and use this Control M preview mesh edges and turn it on. So uh, as you can see here, the default input of the plane is XY, and that is because this X plane, XY plane is here. So if I just extract that and turn it off, you can see that this is the produced mesh. If I move these points, in the Z direction, you can see that this is simply a mesh, uh, which is a connection between these points based on this uh, closest point. So this point is going to search around uh, around the points and the cloud of points and find the nearest points and connect to that. And again, so uh, if we have these points, uh, this point is always going to connect to this one and it will not connect to this because it's just far away. So this is the Delaunay mesh, and it's the base of the uh, Woronoi mesh, uh, the Woronoi. So if you want to know about the Woronoi 2D, you can also, I will put it up here, somewhere up here, so you can see the Woronoi and know more about how Delaunay mesh will produce Woronoi cells. But for now, we want to work with this. You can always add points by going to the points, right-clicking on this, and going to manage point collection. And let's just do this. And you can always add points here. So if I just want to add maybe two points, you can see that this is from 000. And I'm going to use these points and move them here to produce a new geometry. So you can see these points can also produce the geometry. OK, so uh, basically the Delaunay mesh is not something special. You can see that this is just a simple mesh. You can always use that to produce a simple mesh like that, but we can make this more complicated, as I just told you, with the Weaverbird plugin. So you can also go to the, our website or uh, to download the Weaverbird plugin. And if I just go to the transform section, you can see that there is a Weaverbird picture frame here, okay? So we can just connect this to the mesh. And let's just turn the Delaunay mesh off. And if I just go to the insert type, you can see that there, there are two options, percent and parallelogram, uh, parallelogram. And so I'm going to use this second one. And you can just give something between 0 and 2. So let's just put this from 0, 1 to 
maybe two with two decimals and give this to the distance. So if I just increase that, you can see it will just give you better results instead of going with the percent uh, option. So as you can see here, we will have a picture frame of that mesh and this will be the results. And now we can just go and uh, perform two components on this. One is the most important thing you can combine that with the Delaunay mesh. I'm going to summarize this with this one. This is going to help you with the extrusion. So it's something like extrusion, okay, extruding the mesh. This one will give you uh, the frame. So you can always use this to produce the frame. This one will give you the window. So if you want to also produce a window on the frame, you can use this one. And at the end, I'm going to use this one, which is called the Catmull Cat Clark subdivision. And we'll, this will help you to uh, produce a smooth mesh. So I'm always using these one, and then I'm going to also give you some hints of how you can use that to produce other tools. So if I want to give this a thickness, I can just give this to the mesh input and connect a number to the distance. And you can see that I can increase the thickness. So if I just bake this, you can see that I can produce that. And we can also have the windows by simply going to the uh, mesh window, give that to the Delaunay mesh. Remember, you have to use the second option and give the same number for the distance if you want to produce the window. So we can also have another layer for the windows and always have them something like that. But if you want to go towards producing something smooth, you can always go with the Catmull Clark subdivision. You can smooth the picture frame or the extruded picture frame. So let's just see which one is better. First, I'm going to smooth out this picture frame and you can use three level of smoothing and let's just see this turn everything off and you can see this will just produce a smooth mesh again i can just hit Control m if i don't want to see that and you can also go to the display section and connect a custom preview to this let's just put the swatch color swatch to this if you want to give this a color so you can see the smooth result. But I always prefer to smooth the mesh after I've just made this a little bit thicker. So uh, I usually use a picture frame, then I thicken the mesh, then I smooth it out. So you can see that I can also give this a little bit of thickness. And here we go. This is the results. And now we can try to play with those points and produce better results. Here we go. You can see how easy it is to control this. Okay, maybe move this point, maybe move this point a little bit up, and here we go. Okay, so this is how you can uh, play with the Delaunay mesh and combine that uh, with the Viva plugin. You can also use the window. Again, you have to thicken, and let's just give the thicken and the Viva with Catmull Clark to this one also. And you can see that you can also produce windows, but that's going to give you a little bit of offset. So remember, you will always have an offset on that. And you can always bake this into a layer and bake this one into another layer, OK? But if you want to have the same windows, uh, you can basically dismiss this mesh thicken thing and give this to the output of the window and the frame. And let's just turn everything off. And now you can see that this is fit. And then you have to uh, extrude that. that. You can see that this is, okay, let's just bake this into one layer and this one into another layer. And you can see that these are just fitting onto the mesh. And then you can extrude them and produce the results. Okay, I'm going to delete this one. We don't need the windows, but we can just simply turn them off. Okay, so this is the first thing you can do. Another thing you can just... Uh, try to work with is let's just delete this one and have the Delaunay mesh. Let's just go with Control M again, and I'm going to go to the Viverbird. What we can do is also smooth this without giving this a frame. So if I just smooth this, maybe 
three times and then give this a thickness. You can also give a thickness, then smooth it. Doesn't really matter. So turn this off and turn this on. Again, uh, let's just give this a custom preview tool and give this a swatch. And I'm going to hit the control M. So this is also a smooth mesh you can produce with those points. So you can see that how the deformation will just produce a smooth mesh. Let's just move this point a little bit down. So you can see that this is basically something like sculpting, but this will help you to make a smooth mesh. So let's just bake this and here we go. We will have this mesh here. And if I just make a render of this, you can see how smooth it is. And here we go. We have this mesh here. Okay. And now we can also see that this is a hollow mesh. Okay. Uh, we can also, before smoothing the mesh, uh, if, if we don't want to use that simple frame thing, let's just go back to Control M again. Uh, you can always also give this stellate accumulation. We also talked about the Beaverbird plugin in a tutorial. I will also put it up here. So if I just connect this to the mesh and give this a distance, uh, what will happen is that it's going to extrude each of those faces in this a normal direction. So if I bake this, you can understand that this is one of those triangles at the center is extruding. And again, for all of those faces. Again, if I just connect this to the smooth and then give this a thickness. You can see that I'm just producing something like a crease on it, like that. And let's just increase that more so it's going to be on the smooth surface. Here we go. Again, we can just play with those points to produce better results. Okay, here we go. We can just move this a little bit up to give this more volume. So you can always also use this stellate accumulation thing and then bake the results. Again, we will have something like this one. And you can see that we have the thickness and you can also always go to the perspective, right click and use this clipping plane tool to cut off your mesh just to see which one is better. So this is going to be a good tip for you. Okay, let's just go back to this one. Use this clipping plane, draw a clipping plane, and move this clipping plane in the Z direction. So you can also cut off this if you want, or you can just simply play with this clipping plane to give you different results. Here we go. Or you can simply just squeeze that mesh between two of them. So I'm going to use Control C, Control V, move this a little bit inside, and turn this 180 degrees. So again, you can see that I can also have a slice of this mesh. Okay, there's a problem with my graphics, I think, but you can see how easy it is uh, to produce that slice of mesh between two uh, slicing or clipping planes. Okay, so this is also another way with the playing with the Dulani mesh. So if you want to also use other tools of the Viverbird plugin, we can go here, let's just use this. And what we can do is to go here and in the subdivision, you can also use this quad split subdivision uh, and try each of those patterns. I'm going to show you one of them. Okay, so let's just give this subdivision. You can see that this is trying to subdivide the faces. Again, we can just say maybe four times. It's going to take a while. If you just increase that, it's just going to be at the three section level and then again we can uh, simply smooth it and give this a thickness if we want so you can always use this technique if you want to produce a mesh let's just control m and again you can see that you can also combine that with those frames because the uh, combination is just infinite you can always make a frame don't then just do something after making the frame, so if I just go and use this one, maybe define the distance, and then give this to the 
uh, constant quad, you can see that this is also producing the results. I guess that the thickness is too much, so I'm going to decrease that and also give the distance outwards. So if you want to, you can also put the distance expression and minus x. Uh, there's also another tip if you want to play with this Catmore Clock subdivision is that you can, okay, let's just turn everything off. Uh, you can also uh, play with this smooth naked edges and see that there are three options fixed smooth and corner fixed. You can also change this and see the results. You can see that this is not changing anything. And uh, that's also related to this one, okay? So if I just go to the fixed, you can see that it's going to give this smooth. It's going to be something like that. And corner fixed is just the same as the smooth. So let's just give this a three level of smoothing thing. And again, you can see that the same result was here. And if I give this here, uh, okay you can see that this is the result. So let's just make that back into minus x, delete that, so you can see that outwards. Okay, so this was the way you can do that. You can also always use this one, mid-edge subdivision. Let's just do this. If you just give that to this one, and again, divide this one. You can also define the level, so let's just give that to the Delaunay mesh, and say, three levels and after giving this uh, mid-edge subdivision which is something like that let's just uh, do something special we can then after producing this kind of uh, polylines we can just give this a frame so you can see how easy it is to combine reverb plugin tools and then let's just give this a 1.2 distance here we have this and then if I just smooth that out, you can see that result, which I talked about, and you can see how easy it is to make that happen. For the end of this uh, tutorial, I just want you to give you another tip, uh, extra tip you can use, and that is using this Viva Dual Graph. And if you just use the Dual Graph, you can see that it's going to uh, assume this triangle here. It's going to calculate uh, the center of it and connect to the mid edge and make something like this. So again, we can uh, use this one, go to, okay, I had the picture frame, so let's just give this to this one. And again, you can see that you can also produce something like this based on the dual graph. Let's just turn everything off and try to just change those locations. That's another way you can simply play with the dual graph, which also is, uh, which is also useful. I will put the Viverber plugin up here. And if you go to our website and check out our Viverber plugin tutorial, you can see that I have explained the dual graph also in our web post and our web blog. Okay, so, so this was the tutorial for the uh, Dulani Mesh. Leave a comment below and tell us what do you think about this tutorial and, and thank you for watching. Thank you for watching and subscribe to our channel and you can also watch uh, something that is related to this video, that corner, and see you next time.